Hi, welcome to week eight, quarterfinal week of Sewing Bee Unraveled with me, Jane, from Haberdash Do. Uh, this week was 1930s week and we saw the contestants uh, tackle a pair of sailor pants and trousers uh, in the pattern challenge. They had to transform a couple of men's shirts into a 1930s style blouse for a lady in the transformation challenge and then in the made to measure they had to make a 1930s inspired buyer's cut dress. So quite a lot for them to get to grips with this week. Sorry I'm keeping an eye on the door because I'm filming this whilst the shop is open and it's quite quiet because it's such a lovely sunny day. So hopefully we won't get interrupted. So sailor pants. So they had four hours to make these. They were quite technical. They had um, they had a, a fold up flap at the front and then behind that was a crossover section with two buttons and then in the the fold up flap at the button with the buttons at the side there was a pocket constructed on the inside and that had them all flummoxed and I'm not surprised because it was you know, to make it wrong side to wrong side on part of it and right it looked really complicated even when they as me tried to explain it uh, I got confused so um obviously I didn't see the pattern instructions so I couldn't really see um, so they only had four hours which is quite tight I think for something quite technical and um, they had to slash the, f the front fabric um, and create um, the pocket flaps so they had to face that and finish that all neatly which uh, a few of them came on stuck on um, yeah so pattern wise I couldn't find anything in the McCall's range the only thing I could find was this one it's a new one out 8260 it has like a yoke at the front and a button fastening at the side so there is no zip um, and then it's pleated onto um, pleated onto this yoke and then at the back it's just uh, neatly fitted with darts so that's quite a nice pattern 8260 uh, so that would be suitable fabric wise a few of them chose denim which was but they chose a really a quite heavyweight denim I think Brogan and um, Deborah chose a denim. Uh, we've got a couple of denims that would be suitable. Um, somebody did a denim that was much lighter, it was Man Yi. So this is a much lighter denim, it's got a little bit of stretch in it. It's quite a reasonable price, I think it's £9 a metre. So we've got that one. Uh, we've also got this one which is new in, it's slightly darker. It, it's, it says it's a denim, so it's 100% cotton. Um, but it has got a sort of a viscousy feel to it. It's not as light as a viscous, but it does um, hang nicely. So that one is, I think that's 10 pounds a meter, hidden the label, uh, 12 pounds a meter, beg your pardon. That's 150 wide, so it's quite wide. Um, other fabrics that you could do it in, we've got um, a couple of linen mixes. This is a soft gray stripe the next Hobbs one that's a linen and cotton mix that will be a good weight a nice summer weight to do them in or any of our linens this is just a couple of the colors that we've got the um, uh, chartreuse like a pistachio green um, and I've got uh, this stone color as well out to show you we've also got it in rust navy black dark gray uh, like a light linen color and gold as well. So the transformation challenge, I had to take two men's shirt and turn them into men's shirts, sorry, and turn them into a ladies blouse inspired by the 1930s. Uh, so there were lots of pictures around the studio apparently to give them inspiration. Um, I've had a look through the catalog and there's a few little blouses for sort of 1930s hints. So 1930s I'm thinking sort of um uh pulled in waists, little collar details or bow details, um, sort of the inverted bust line, if you know what I mean. I've got a couple of patterns to show you. Um, puff sleeves and sort of geometric art deco style shapes. So that kind of thing. So uh, I found this one, which is 7978. Um, I don't know if you can see here, it's got that kind of inverted bust line which so it, it kind of curves up like this uh, um, little puff sleeves either long sleeves or short sleeves 
um, and then little button details down the front. So there was that one, which was 7978. There's this one, 8198. Again, little puff sleeves, um, sort of little Revere collar detail, um, and just short either tie on the waist or cinched in at the waist. And that was it on the blouse front uh, from the catalogue. Um, I mean, there's lots of inspiration out there. I thought uh, that on the whole, what they did for the transformation challenge was really good. Manu's was really clever. Uh, the two-tone sort of silky uh, fabric. Um, she had this sort of geometric shape in a contrast, darker colour, and she tied that up with the puff sleeve trim. Um, Christian came a bit unstuck, and he messed up his first uh, shirt that he cut up, so he, only, he was only working with one shirt at the end. Um, but what he made wasn't too bad, it was just all one colour, and then he put a tie around it, a lace tie, which they said should have been in a contrast colour. And then I think the worst one was Brogan's, which was looked like a pyjama top that she'd inserted some lace panels and something else into. But Esme said, and I agreed with Esme, it, it still looked like a pyjama top. So at the end of that round, in first place was Man Yi, uh, followed by Deborah, Christian, Annie, and then Brogan is sitting on the bottom, having come uh, last in, in both of those challenges. Well, second to last in the in the first challenge. So the fabric wise, um, we've got some lovely light linen mixes. It's called Serona linen. So I think Serona is a, a type of fibre or fabric. So this hangs really beautifully for blouses. We've got it in that ivory, in a pale pink, um, kind of a dusky pink. Probably doesn't show up very well on the camera and also in a duck egg blue uh, i think you'll see ali in a little jacket made from this very shortly <laughs> ali's got so many projects on the go it's quite funny we always joke she just says i'm just going to knock this up at the weekend and then three months later it appears um this is a cotton it's a very soft pastel stripe that's woven into the fabric so it matches all those three linens. That would make a really pretty little blouse. Um, or more sort of art deco-y. Uh, you could go for a full colour, that kind of thing. Right, so that was the transformation challenge. Moving on to the made to measure, they had to make a 1930s inspired bias cut dress. Uh, it was quite interesting listening to the uh, fabric historian, or fashion historian, saying that they used bias, uh, cut, fabrics cut in the bias, um, so that things would drape and cling to the figure, because they didn't have stretch fabrics back then. So I thought that was quite interesting, because if you take a woven fabric, like a, a cotton poplin or one of the linens, so it's quite stable when it's it's in its normal square state, but if you put it on the bias and pull, it'll have some give in it. A bit like my bingo wings there. <laughs> I just caught that on camera. Uh, right, bias cut dresses. Back to it, Jane. Um, you have to be very careful when you're cutting out on the bias because any stretch of the fabric is going to misshape, um, misshape your pattern piece. Um, I saw a lot of them were cutting out on the floor. Um, which is uh, great if you've got the floor space to do it and your floor is nice and clean. Uh, um, a bit disappointed they didn't give them tables big enough to cut it out on. But there we go. Um, struggled to find any bias cut dresses, but I found some sort of bias inspired dresses. So 8140. It's got that kind of inverted bust line. I think we mentioned it in the blouses as well. Um, I'm sure it's got a proper name, but that's what I call it. And then this one's got... You can do it with sort of floaty sleeves or little um, sleeves that are gathered with um, a, a band at the end to bring them in. The other pattern is McCall's 8141, not a true bias, but a sort of 90s and 1930s inspired styling. It's got this inverted uh, kind of bust line again. It's got a wide waistband. And then we've got gathers into the neck, either into a, like a halter neck, uh, with a high collar 
or into longer sleeves or shorter little puff sleeves. Uh, so that's 8141. Fabric wise, um, they all chose a slippery fabric. Um, Annie and Manu chose the same pattern, uh, which was this um, rather stunning crossover style bodice with a long sash um, and then a bias cut uh, skirt or main dress from the from the bust line down. I think it's a Vogue pattern. Um, uh, fabric wise, so Annie did it in a very bold red satin. This is a polyester satin so it's quite stable uh, but it will give you a stunning effect and it's it's not, it's quite, yeah, it's quite a stable fabric, so it probably wouldn't be such a nightmare to sew as some of the uh, silk satins, which is uh, what a lot of them probably used. Uh, so Annie, she French seamed all of her seams, so it was beautifully finished. Um, and Manu did hers in an ivory colour, and she didn't get the same finish on hers. It looks stunning but didn't have quite the same effect and wasn't finished to the same high standard. Other fabrics that you could use, we've got this which is a, this is a polyester, it's got a tiny bit of stretch in it, um, but that would hang beautifully on the bias, it's in a kind of a royal, royal navy I guess you call it, it's not a royal blue but it's not a navy either, that's quite reasonable, it's six pounds a metre. Uh, these I think I showed to you last week as well, these are like a um, like a matte satin, so it's not a really shiny satin. It's a polyester, we've got it in a silvery grey and in a teal as well. Okay, so um, yeah, so Annie and Manu did that same style. Uh, Deborah did a beautiful gold crepe backed satin um, and her, her pattern had a seam going diagonally across the front there which is a nightmare to sew because it's, it's two edges on, on the bias. So she used what they call stabiliser tape, which just stops that steam, seam from stretching as you sew it. Because if it stretches as you sew it, it's all going to go out of shape and it's going to be a wavy line. It's not going to hang smoothly. Um, so she also French seamed all of her seams as well. So that was beautifully finished. Um, she cut in her cutting out she cut two front panels the same so she had to quickly go and cut another one so that did put her behind a little bit. Um, Manier I've already spoken about then there was Brogan with her dusky pink um, satin it was on a bodice and then it had it was kind of like chevron um, seams down the front and her bust her bodice didn't fit the model that well bus starts were in slightly the wrong place um, where she'd put the zip in at the back it had puckered a bit and also her rolled hem when she'd done the rolled hem that stretched as she sewn it so um, that was all gone a bit out of shape and that would just make it go a bit wavy and not hang completely straight and then Christian went a little bit off piste so he used a gorgeous plum velvet and his velvet although it was lovely was a uh, stretch so making a bias cut dress on a stretch fabric kind of defeats the object really um so i think that's why they marked him down they also marked him down because he tinkered with his pattern and he hadn't really decided exactly what he was going to do so the back he messed up the back a bit and then he put a, he put a, a little bar across when he would have been nice if he just left it open um and then i don't think he finished he didn't finish the sleeves um, yeah so it was all a bit cobbled together I mean it, it did look stunning and it was a stunning colour and it was a stunning fabric but it didn't quite meet the brief um, so that was why they sent him home even though if you looked at it on paper uh, it was actually Brogan who had come last and second to last um, in the challenges and then didn't do a great uh, made to measure either um, and Christian had done okay in the in the pattern challenge he came second to the pattern challenge um, and he did better than Brogan in the transformation but he obviously came last in this challenge so I think this 
this Made to Measure challenge has more weighting than the other two challenges. Um, so that's why if you don't do well on this round, you're off home. Anyway, it was a shame to see him go because I thought he was a good, solid dressmaker, sewer, sewist, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and so we're into an all-female uh, semi-final next week and then we're into the final. So not long to go. So next week is um, Japanese week. So you can expect to see some kimonos, I think, and some origami and a bit of look like they'll be doing some a hand sewing visible mending sashiko i think it's called anyway we will see you all next week enjoy the sunny weather if it is with you uh, it certainly is with us down here anyway thanks a lot bye